Over the past few years, the NBA has had more parity than ever. Part of that is the recent influx of young talent we've had enter the league of late. Many of these players are able to contribute right away and quickly turn around the fortunes of the franchises who draft them. I'm going to assess some of this young talent and rank the five best players at each position that will be under 25 years old when the next season begins. This first installment is the guards, a group of players with a wide array of size and skills. If you want to follow this series, don't hesitate to subscribe so you can check out the videos as soon as they're released. With so many options, we were bound to have honorable mention candidates. John ja Morant would certainly make this list, but he turns 25 just a week after I'm posting this. So happy early birthday, Ja! I can't wait to see you back out on the floor this upcoming season. Darius Garland has already been an all-star and has shown what he's capable of. Though in what could have been a result of missing time with a broken jaw where he lost over 10 pounds, he didn't quite look like the player we got to know this past season. Kobe White thrived in an expanded role this past year, showing improvement in pick and roll, and was runner-up for the Most Improved Player Award. With DeMar DeRozan leaving in free agency, he could have an even bigger role for the Bulls this year. Then we have Jalen Suggs, who not only made an all-defensive team in his third season, but broke out and shot 40% from three. Suggs should have more ball handling responsibilities for the Magic this upcoming season, and if he shows growth there, could certainly crack the top five next year. Now, let's get to the list. Checking in at number five, we have Cade Cunningham. After playing just 12 games in his second year, Cunningham this past season flashed all the skills that made him the number one pick in the 2021 draft. The 22-year-old isn't the most explosive player, but he can create opportunities for himself with his ability to bully defenders of various sizes, and at 6'6", displays impressive court vision. This past year, Cunningham really thrived in the mid-range, where he knocked down 53% of his shots that were 10 to 16 feet from the basket. The big thing with Cunningham is that his three-point shooting hasn't been as expected. Part of that is likely due to what's been asked of him. The Pistons have lacked spacing, and Cunningham attempted a lot of his threes off the dribble. This past year, he shot 33% on threes off the bounce, but made 37% of his attempts from deep off the catch. That on top of his free throw shooting is encouraging. Not surprisingly, Cunningham played some of his best basketball last year when the Pistons did add more spacing. This was an emphasis this offseason for the team and it wouldn't be surprising if he became a first-time All-Star this upcoming year. Coming in at number four is LaMelo Ball. It's hard to believe it since he's been a public figure for so long now, but Ball will only be turning 23 this year. While ankle injuries limited Ball to just 22 games this past season, he was taking his offensive game to the next level. Ball ranked in the 80th percentile scoring out of pick and roll this past season, and prior to that had never finished above the 40th percentile. One reason for this could be that he drastically improved his finishing around the basket on shots from 10 feet and in. Ball's also a dangerous high-volume three-point shooter who has been fantastic throughout his career off the catch when opponents leave him open. On top of that, he has rare court vision and can make passes few players even dare to attempt. So why is Ball only ranked at four? He's had trouble staying healthy, as he's played in 50 or more games just twice in his career so far. On top of that, with the incredible passes, there are a fair amount of head-scratching decisions, and his defense can leave much to be desired. Though the Hornets are destined to make strides this year, and a healthy ball will be essential in doing that. This is where it gets tough, as at number three I have Tyrese Halliburton. The 24-year-old is the engine that makes the Pacers' up-tempo offense go, as he's a pick-and-roll wizard who excels at creating for others and is very efficient creating for himself out of the action as well. He does all this while displaying court vision and anticipation that can't be taught. Though his shot is unorthodox, Halliburton's consistently shown he can beat opponents from deep, whether it's off the dribble or off the catch. While he made the All-NBA team, this past year was a tale of two seasons for Halliburton. He was the breakout star of the in-season tournament, but his numbers took a drastic dip after a hamstring injury in January. Some of it might have been due to some changes in how games were officiated when he returned, but he saw a big dip in scoring and had some rough stretches shooting from three following the injury. The hamstring injury could have very well lingered into the Pacers' deep postseason run, where he didn't quite look himself either. Though one thing's for certain, the Pacers are in good hands with Halliburton having the keys to their offense for the foreseeable future. Some might pick Halliburton here, but I have Tyrese Maxey checking in at number two. After averaging a very efficient 20 points per game as a secondary ball handler playing with James Harden, Maxey was handed the keys this past year as the lead guard in Philadelphia and didn't look back. The 23-year-old made his first all-star team and won most improved player averaging 26 points a game on impressive efficiency. At 6'2", Maxey's the shortest guard on the list, but he's a blur on the floor and can score at all levels. 
Maxi's able to play at various paces, but with his speed performed very well on handoffs, as the 76ers incorporated the action more into their offense to utilize his speed getting downhill. Maxi's also dangerous out of pick and roll, where he's capable of stopping on a dime and hitting a jumper off the dribble and displays a lethal step back three. We did see Maxi have more difficulty scoring when Joel Embiid was out, but the duo complements each other incredibly well. Now you add Paul George to the mix, and Maxi's ability to score at all levels is even more valuable as defenses will have fewer possessions where they can double him. This is only the beginning for Maxi, and it wouldn't be surprising if he made another leap in the near future. If you followed the NBA the past few years, you likely had a good idea of who number one would be. Anthony Edwards made his first All-NBA team this past year and is only getting started. Turning 23 this month, Edwards' blend of size and speed makes him incredibly tough to stop getting downhill, where he's capable of making jaw-dropping plays, though the rest of his game continues to develop. Edwards this past year was particularly effective in the mid-range, where he took more attempts and had the best shooting percentage from 10 to 16 feet of his career. Another encouraging sign for Edwards and the Timberwolves is he's making strides as a playmaker. There is still room to grow, but as opponents throw the kitchen sink at him defensively, Edwards has shown he's capable of making the right pass. While it's tough to keep up every game given the offensive burden, Edwards can be excellent defensively, where his strength, lateral movement, and length can challenge opponents of various sizes. You better get used to Edwards, because he figures to be one of the league's brightest stars for the foreseeable future. With that, we've reached the conclusion of who I feel are the five best guards under 25. There were some tough decisions to make, but I feel good about them, and I can't wait to see who makes the list this time next year. If you had any thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments, and if you made it this far, don't forget to like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to keep up with this series and my other posts in the future.